Hey guys, uh, I keep trying to do the live feed thing, but it's not working. So here we are today. Uh, I'm going to go over some things on saw vibration. I want to show you guys some little things. Uh, first thing is a saw new, a nice new saw should not should not have a lot of vibration in it not you know to where you can't hold the bar still while you're trying to carve if you're starting to get this kind of thing when you're carving um, there's moving parts on the saws that you may not see right away you may not recognize as uh, problems if they come loose it's usually saw vibration is with something loose either either in your handle somewhere well, the one thing that I want to show you guys right off the bat um, that's going to cause saw vibration. Now, I don't know if you saw my live feed and upcoming projects, but this saw here, I don't know if you even got a good look at it. We'll try to get in there today. All right, just take a look at that. Look at the mess in there. All right, this was in... The last successful live feed that I did. Now, what do you think happened here? If you didn't watch that live feed, you see where there's a bolt missing? Right? We're missing a bolt here. Okay. Where is that bolt? Do you guys see it? You see it in there? Uh-huh. Guy thought, the guy I bought it from thought that he locked his saw up. Well, actually, I got it from a shop really cheap because they didn't want to mess with it. Um, this is such an old saw. This is one of the old 025s. You know how you tell them? See the red switch? These are the old schoolers. All right? It, it came from the same place uh, years and years ago this guy bought it. It was a good saw. So, he traded it in. But look what he did. He had to have run this thing for quite a while to do, to do all of this damage here on the flywheel and do all of this damage here on the fins of the jug. Uh, that's all from that screw spinning around at a really high rate of speed, a really high velocity. Um, that one bolt did all that damage and destruction. Now. We can avoid this from happening if when we start to feel a vibration, we stop. Why do I say if we start to feel a vibration, we stop? If the saw, you really need to pay attention to your saw, how it runs every day, because if it starts to feel different, even if it starts to twist when you give it throttle, um, something's going on. There's something going on in your, your, your jug could be loose there's four bolts on the bottom here um, in there they're really hard to get to you have to undo the handle for them but your jug bolts are here 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 and here now if that's loose your whole your whole entire motors loose so that's gonna cause vibration it's also gonna eventually cause an air leak because that's gonna uh, the bottom of your case is actually split one day I will take one of these apart and show you this whole unit comes out of these nylon cases which is that's pretty cool you can't really modify them heavily like do decking and stuff like that but if your spark plug has a lot of ash crust buildup on it that can cause vibration because you're getting misfire um, you hear this a lot so this guy ran this thing hard I mean he he let it go in there and that thing just banged around and banged around and banged around. Felt vibration because your coil, see that moving? As soon as that, as soon as one of these bolts comes loose on your coil, your coil is going to hit your flywheel. And when we take this flywheel off, you will see that flywheel is completely shredded by the coil. The coil is completely shot. The coil is completely blown apart on the end where it's been hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting um, because that's a magnet there's a magnet here 
right here on your flywheel and that magnet sucks your coil down that's why you get signal that's why when if you take this off and turn it by hand it goes whoop bloop whoop bloop whoop bloop because it's bypassing the steel or the reader on the coil you're getting a magnetic field there that's what sends signal up to the plug and causes fire pretty simple right these are basically vacuums with a small electrostatic I guess you could call it electrostatic charge um, they call this a sender they call it a coil they call it a module it depends on who you're talking to it does the same thing in everybody's book though um, as long as it's grounded out that's another thing you could be getting vibrations if your ground screw is loose that's going to vibrate I mean if you're that sensitive you're doing really well um, other things we will get into later on down the road there there are all these moving parts here if your bearing is bad that could cause a vibration if this little if this little clip the little C clip right there on your shaft falls off and the only thing holding your bar and chain or your your uh, holding your your chain on the sprocket or holding your rim on the hub um, is the outside cover is that is that's banging in and out hitting the inside of the uh, the cover that's going to cause vibration there's so many things on these saws but number one thing to check always pull your pull starter off the minute you feel vibration because if you let this go you're gonna be selling me a forty dollar saw or I, I shouldn't tell you what I got it for I got I paid over fifty for it but they're worth forty bucks at this point it's completely locked up we don't know what's good or bad about it um, these first thing to check ever okay that's the very first thing to check um, if you get vibration mufflers come loose all the time back to the motor mounts right if we feel vibration we want to we want to get in here and and check these four bolts right we want to check here this is the heavy mechanical stuff the first thing that you do when you feel vibration is check the outside stuff that could come loose check your muffler check these points right any of any of these bumpers attachment points the other thing to check very important to check there is a bolt here with a little saddle washer if you lose that bolt in that saddle washer like I did on this saw And that's, I mean, when you're running that saw, man, that thing is going to shake the crap out of your saw. It's going to make it feel like something is really wrong. A loose spark plug can cause vibration. A loose air filter box can cause vibration. It's best if you check everything. I always check everything. Um, but there's the initial uh, bad, bad things. A loose plug is not going to necessarily be a bad, bad thing right away um, but you don't want to keep running the saw that way it will cause serious problems in the end um, usually though vibration is these simple things right muffler bolt this and commonly inside here uh, we just changed the fuel line on this saw now we want to check because I noticed that the motor was shaking separately it looked like the motor was shaking a lot um, to me it was shaking a lot to you guys you may not see that there's movement there that concerns me so this is where I say check your saw like I haven't checked these bolts in a long long time it's been kind of one of my flagship saws it's really uh, really been good and it's had a lot of workouts now the reason I'm not worried about the muffler bolts 
even though I haven't checked them, um, because I'm not seeing the muffler moving separate from the motor. I just put a wrench on the bolts. They feel fine. I'm not going to tighten them anymore. There's no need. No need for any of that. Now, the only reason I did that is so that I can try to get to that other bolt. If you can't not get to that other bolt, because all these handles are different, drill a hole. I'm going to do that right now because I still can't get to that bolt. I know, some people are going to say, why would, why would you drill into your handle? Well, A, this handle is broken to begin with, so it's had a good life. I've treated it well. Um, I've definitely put it to the test. And it's doing fine. And B, that little hole is not going to hurt the handle. There's not a lot of stress at that point, or there shouldn't be. Now, the important thing here is when you drill, drill over your bolt, you can see the bolt down in there. Drill over your bolt and don't drill into your oil line, which is right next to it. Use a little, little bit bigger drill bit than you actually need so you can move your tool around to get in there. Take your time. This is unorthodox. So there I hit the I hit the bolt with the tip of the drill bit and not the oil hose. I don't recommend anybody do that, but I didn't want to take the whole handle off. That's too much process for me. Um, there's no need if you're going to drill a hole anyway. Okay, so you saw I checked the holes, or I checked the bolts, all four of them. They didn't move. So, the saw, we still have an air leak somewhere, or it's just not fully pressurized yet, taking all that fuel in and drinking it up. Um, it's an old saw. It's had, it's had piston work. I shaved the squish band on the piston, so that could be one of the problems now. Uh, it could need a new plug. As far as that stalling goes, it's normal for this saw and its age and in its time. Uh, probably needs new rings. It's, it's kind of weird. You know, when you're seeing that shaking thing going on and you can't really... I mean, 
mean, I can definitely say that's loose. There is something loose in there because I can move it up and down with my screwdriver. So, now, now it's going to get tricky because when I do this with the screwdriver, I see this, I see my crank move up and down. So, the motor is definitely loose in the case. So, I was right. I don't know if you see that, but I see it. This is a warning that maybe it's time to not run this saw. But before we get all crazy taking the entire saw apart, we need to determine where that looseness is coming from. So I put my finger in. This is the bottom of the motor in this hole. I put my finger in there and try to put it against the white case and see if I feel a difference. The, the metal, my fingertip is on the metal. My finger is resting on the side of the white. When I wiggle that, I definitely feel the metal moving separately from the white. This is your case. This carries the motor. So the bolts are tight, which means the motor is intact. What's happened is the case itself, the, the entire case is shot. It's dead. It's done. Um, just like this handle cracking, plastic wears out. Why is it dead and done and shot? Probably because I run too big of a bar on this heavier chain, heavier bars. There's lots of reasons over the years. Um, they do wear out. So it's a good thing that I got the other project. Um, this is going to be a new project. We will take this completely apart. I will show you the motor. I'll show you part for part the entire saw. We have the new fuel line on it. Uh, I'm not afraid to run it, but I do want to get in in here check my coil first make sure that my flywheel is not hitting my coil because those coils are 65 70 bucks a piece or more so you don't want to destroy your coil i just want to make a video of vibration uh how to check it what to look for and now on to other videos where i actually fix stuff thanks for watching